This is for section 1-5, measuring segments, and this is the second video for this section. How do you find the length of a segment given the midpoint? Last um, video, we talked about the segment addition postulate. Now we're going to talk about what, how to use that postulate when you're given the midpoint. Let's first learn some vocabulary terms when it comes to midpoint. The midpoint of a segment is a point that divides the segment into two congruent segments. So we're going to practice this with licorice, just ripping it in half to see that what the midpoint is. A point line ray or other segment that intersects a segment at its midpoint is said to bisect the segment. And here's an example of that down here. Here's segment A, B, and we have this midpoint M. Notice it's notated by large M. And we have a ray coming from that midpoint. This, this ray is actually bisecting this, this, uh, this segment. And AM is going to be congruent to MB. They equal each other. I can actually write that as a statement. AM is equal to MB. Let's go ahead and practice this concept with two examples. Here's our first example. D is the midpoint of EF and... Oh, excuse me, yes. D is the midpoint of EF. Here's EF and there's point D and that is the midpoint. So I'm going to write a huge... Uh, I won't write an M because I don't want to confuse you with extra letters. So, um, let's see. ED... Excuse me. ED is equal to 4X plus 6. Notice it's notated on the picture. Pictures help out a lot, so I encourage you to use pictures all the time. DF is equal to 7X minus 9. That's notated here as well on the picture. And so we need to find out all the segment lengths. We need to find out what ED is, what DF is, and then what is the total length of EF. So the first thing is we're going to need to do is set up an equation to help us solve for X to find these segment lengths. So since they are, since D is the midpoint, that means that this segment ED is equal to this segment here, DF. So we're going to set equal the two expressions and get 4X plus 6 is equal to 7X minus 9. Now variables on both sides, I'll solve by first getting all variables to one side. So subtract 4X and I get 6 equals 3X minus 9. Add 9, get 3x equals 15, and then x is going to equal 5. Now that I have my variables solved for, I need to find out all these segment lengths. Let's first do ED, and I'm going to do one in each color, so I'll do ED in black. ED is equal to 4 multiplied by 5 plus 6, which equals 26. Let's go ahead and do DF. DF is going to equal 7 multiplied by 5 minus 9. So now we get 35 minus 9 and 35 minus 9 is 46. Oh, excuse me, 26. That's why I like to have a, cal a calculator handy, just in case. Sorry, I'm having some diff technical difficulties. Okay, I got it. 26. Oh, well, that should make sense, right? They should both be 26 since ED is equal to DF. Good. So we definitely know it wouldn't have been 36 because DF or ED equal 26 as well. And now that I have those two numbers, I can add them together. 26 plus 26. Or I can do 26 times 2 and I would get 52 as my answer, which is the entire length of EF. So I've solved for each portion of my example. Let's practice one more. Here's our second example. Q is the midpoint of PR. Here's PR and Q is right in the middle. It's the midpoint. What are PQ, QR, and PR lengths? So we need to find, again, just like last example. But for this one, I have the steps listed to remind you. We're gonna first find X. Then we'll find the lengths of each segment. And really we can only we can do only one, but we'll check and we'll do two. And then at the very end, we'll combine those two numbers to find the total distance of PR. Let's go ahead and begin. Let's set these two equations to equal to each other. So seven, uh, six X, let me erase that because I want to write smaller. Six X minus seven equals five X plus one minus five X to both sides. And now I get x minus 7 equals 1. 
then add 7 to both sides, and I get x equals 8. Now that I have my variable, I'll plug it in for pq. So I'll do it in different colors. We get 6 times 8 minus 7 equals 41. So um, q, that was just pq that we found. So qr should be the same thing. It should be 41, but let's check. We'll do p, excuse me, qr is equal to 5 multiplied by 8 plus 1 which is going to give us 41 as well. So it checks off. That's awesome. And now we're going to add the two numbers together and we'll be able to find out the length of PR which is going to be 82. And we're done. Wow, that example only took us 1 minute and 30 seconds. It was really quick and I went, by, I went through it very quickly. If you're having difficulty, re-watch the video. Bring all your questions to class and I encourage you to practice some problems from your textbook. See you tomorrow.